Today we're gonna to look at how you can vastly increase your environment render times. This new update focuses on stylized materials. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market Sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. I have a couple different techniques I'm going to show you on how you can greatly reduce your render times when it comes to environments. Now, this is a mixture of advanced techniques and beginner techniques. I'm going to start out with one that you're probably not as familiar with. So if you haven't already seen the Blender Sprite Fright open movie, I highly suggest you go check that out. It's got some really cool art in it. And one of the things they had to struggle with was how to denoise these kind of complicated scenes, because as we know that denoise with animation will sometimes create this kind of wobbling effect over these small details. And they had a really cool solve where they basically ended up doing kind of depth map renders of the background and then projecting those background textures on it. It's kind of a complicated process and they break down how to do it here. I'll link this in the description below. I'm going to show you kind of a simpler version that you can do quickly in Blender with your renders. Now, where this effect is best used is generally in background. So for example, a four scene behind your character or maybe the background out of this window. But I'm gonna go ahead and kind of show you with this just little scene right here, even though it's less than ideal, it kind of shows the strength of the effect. So what you can do is when you go ahead to render, you wanna come over here to the passes and you're going to turn on your mist pass and then you'll hit render. Then you can go ahead and pop over here to your compositor tab. So here you have the render as you would expect kind of plugged in there, but we also now have this mist value. And what this mist value does is kind of measure the depth from the camera. So if I go ahead and plug this in, it gives us a white and black value. And you can go ahead and put this normalized node here and that'll help kind of equalize out the values a tiny bit. And then what you can go ahead and do is save out your color image and save out your kind of depth map image. And then we're gonna move over into another project and show you what you can do with that. So now what you can do is you can import your image into the scene. And here you can see I have the image here and I've gone ahead on the shader tab here and go ahead, show you what I have here. I plugged mine into the kind of emission just so that it didn't have shading. You don't need to do that. But then I've also imported this depth map here and plug that into a color ramp. So I have a bit of control over the depth there. I've inverted it. And then you can plug it into a displacement node and plug it into the displacement on your material. Now, at first, nothing will happen. You need to come down here to your material settings, come down under displacement settings, turn on displacement and bump. But you need to make sure that your plane has enough geometry. So if I tab here into edit mode, you can see that I've subdivided this about 120 times to give it a little bit of depth. And then I've also gone ahead and added a modifier and I set a subdivision modifier and you need to make sure that your feature set is set to experimental for this to work. And then I changed it from Catmull Clark to simple, and then I turned on adaptive subdivision. And this adaptive subdivision is going to adapt the subdivision properties across the geometry to accommodate for the displacement map, introducing more geometry when needed to distort it. Now, if I switch over to render view, you can see that how that depth map is being used to kind of push depth into the map. Now you're not gonna be able to necessarily move around a scene with this, but you can see how this immediately could be used in the background and is much faster to render than loading in all of these textures, particles, hair systems, objects, geometry, and anything else that you might have. So now if I go into my camera view, you can actually see that this even works with depth. Let's take a look at that scene I showed you in the opening, but you can see how there are just thousands and thousands of particles. As you can imagine, that quickly elevates the render times, and it may be fine for a still image, but in this case, I wanted to render an animation of this. So how do you go about kind of speeding up those times? Well, what you can do is you can take your background elements that do not necessarily need to have depth if you're not flying through them and you can actually convert them to a bunch of 2d planes here and you can see here for the foreground elements that still might convey depth in the camera move these elements are all still 3d so that's one great way that you can save time let's look at how you can easily set this up yourself 
So what I did is I went up here and you can use the collections for this. So here's my hills in 2D version. I can go ahead and turn on my 3D hills here. But if you come up here and toggle on this option, you can turn on this indirect light only. And then what you can do is turn this on. So what that means is that if I go ahead and turn on indirect light only for these systems here, that means that this will render out the lighting effects of these layers so that it appears as if those uh, layers are still affecting these lighting wise, but it won't render those out. And then what I went ahead and did is I just kind of toggled off each of these hills one by one and rendered them out to a series of planes. And I went ahead and put in all these 2D layers. So these are all of my hill layers. And you can see that I've also offset those depth wise so that they will blur differently and move differently along with the camera as it moves up and down on the Z axis. So here you can see I have a pretty complex environment, but I've been able to get the render times pretty low by simplifying the geometry in the background. And Blender has a really simple way to do that. If you come back here, I wanted to maintain depth so that I could do kind of a camera pull through the leaves. But you can see here that the geometry back here is actually quite low poly. Now, normally you'd have to do a lot of manual work, but Blender has a really easy way to do that. So if I go ahead and select this object and add a decimate to it, it'll give me the face count. So you can see here, I have 7,000 uh, polygons or faces on there. So if I go ahead and grab another one of these trees, so I'm gonna go ahead, hide these leaves here. I can go ahead, grab everything here, grab that tree, hit Control J to join. And that will put that all into one object there. And if I go ahead and add that decimate modifier back, you can see that this actually started with around 350,000 uh, faces. So you can quite decimate that low. So what you would do is go ahead, put this decimate modifier, and then you would iter something like 0.25. And Blender is going to take a long time to think, and it will lower that face count. You'll determine if it looks good or not, and then you can go ahead and apply that, and then reapply decimate modifier. You can keep setting these numbers lower and lower, but I found that by applying the effect and then reapplying the modifier, I was able to get it with less crashes. So the great thing about this modifier is that I'm actually using the same textures on this tree that I am this tree. And you can see that Blender has done a really good job of trying to kind of translate those UVs down so that they can still use those at least good enough job that these can appear in the background. So that's one way that you can easily kind of reduce render times in your scene. Again, another technique you may be familiar with, but you can actually kind of cut up your images and extrude them. Again, this is better reserved for the background, but I've actually seen people do this with some foreground elements to some success. So using that images as plain add-on I mentioned, you can go ahead and import your image. And this is better suited for things that are a bit more square or mechanical um, things, you know, kind of like these buildings with a lot of sharp edges. I'm gonna show you how to do this with something a bit more organic in a section as well. But if we go ahead tab here into camera view, we can grab our images plane here. We can go into edit mode. And what you can do is just begin grabbing the knife tool and kind of cutting around these shapes. So I'll go ahead, grab this window here. I'm just going to go ahead, do a rough cut there, hit enter. And then what you can do is take that selection there. I'm just going to go ahead and extrude this out towards the camera. And if I go back into my camera view, I'm going to begin drawing again. I'm going to go ahead, take this right here, cut a hole here. Great. And then what I can do is create another hole up here. Go ahead, click there and there, grab there. And then if I switch into face selection mode, I know that this part is actually extruded back in, so I can extrude this backwards. And what those will do was give you a kind of lot of simple depth with simple geometry, but you're still getting a lot of details because of the photographs. You can do this with your own renders. You can do this with imported images such as this, and this can really kind of help fill out your backgrounds and add a lot of detail. So for this next technique, we're going to use something called projection mapping. So this is similar to what we were doing last time by kind of editing the geometry on photos, but here you can do more organic options. Now, in my example here, I am going to do a kind of simpler option so I can quickly show you for this tutorial, but I've actually done this with human characters and a lot of other things like when I needed elements in the background. So first, what you're going to want to do is pick your image and kind of load it into your camera view here. And you can do that by selecting your camera, coming down to the camera and selecting a background image and then importing that in there. You want to make sure that your dimensions match your camera there. Perfect. So after you've got that set up, what we can do is begin kind of building out a basic scene. So let's go ahead, snap into our camera view here. We're going to add that default cube that we all deleted when we first opened our project. We're going to bring this over here, I'm going to rotate that on the Z axis here. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale that up on the Z. 
Great, now what I'm gonna do is add a plane to kind of represent the ground here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this camera here and rotate this on the X axis ever so slightly so that we can see that plane. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead, scale that plane out and this is kind of represent the ground. Now I'm gonna go ahead, grab this background here and I'm just gonna scale this up so we kind of have some depth back there. Now I wanna be able to see my image. So what you can do is under your camera here, you can go to your background image there, display that in front, but leave the opacity on. That'll make things there a bit better. I'm gonna go ahead here, grab this foreground element and kind of bring this down so that it is not interrupting the building there. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and add just another object over there. We'll add another cube there. Move this over on the X axis. And I'm gonna go ahead, move this back here so that it's closer to that background image, perfect. And then I can move that so that it kind of matches up with this building here, perfectly. Now, what we can do here is we can grab all these objects. We'll just hit Control J, join those. Let's call this project for the sake of this tutorial. And then what we can do is we can go ahead, we can grab these, switch into edit mode, make sure everything is selected by pressing A, press U, project from view. And what that's going to do is project the UVs from whatever view you've selected. So if I go ahead and drag this over and switch to the UV editor, select my objects, you can see how that's matching the camera perspective, which is what we want. Great, now what you can do is go ahead, add a new material, we'll call this project as well. We'll come over here to the shader editor, we'll add an image texture, and then that image file should already be in here because we have it as our background image. So we'll go ahead, plug that in there, plug that into the base color, switch over to material preview. And you can see how that's being projected onto our image. We'll go ahead and press control T. We're going to use the UVs of our image. And then we will come here where it says repeat, turn that on to clip. That way we're not getting any odd projections there. And now you can see how this is being projected onto a geometry. So we can shift into render view here. So what you can do is you can just kind of tab into the edit mode here and UV and you can adjust these UVs until you get something you're a bit more happy with, um, scaling those options around so that you're not kind of getting these breaking points and other elements like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of match these UVs to better match the image there. I can go ahead and grab my camera, grab a depth of field. I'm gonna grab that focus object. And let's turn this down to something kind of low so we can get a better idea of what's happening here, even lower, go 0 0.05. And then what I can do is grab this depth of field and I can move this. And of course, you can also go ahead and move your camera around in this, but you can see how this will allow you to get a lot more flexibility. And sometimes you can do an entire scene this way. I've done entire scenes this way for some of my clients before. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.